it's my pleasure to speak about a very important issue in the biomedical research category, which is study design. We have principally three different study designs, observational one, interventional experimental, and lastly, meta-analysis. Observational studies include case series, descriptive study, case control study, cross-sectional study, and cohort study by its types, typical or concurrent, or a typical non-concurrent or historical cohort, other names, retrospective cohort. So all these are types of observational studies. So the question is, how I know, how can I know this is interventional or observational study? I ask myself, if there was an intention to intervene before the study, if the answer is no, it is observational study. If the answer is yes, it is experimental or interventional study. So did investigator assign exposure? No, it is observational study. If it includes a few cases, it is case series. If one case, it's case report. If it includes a lot of cases, but there is no comparison, no comparison group, it is descriptive study, even if it included more than 100 patients. If it includes the two groups, and by the two groups, I assign exposure or risk factors, and then the outcome, which is the result of exposure. So I can have, I can start with exposed and non-exposed. So I have two groups, exposed to certain risk factors or not exposed to this recent, uh, uh, certain factor, and then follow the patients prospectively uh, to uh, searching for the outcome. So what determines the type of observational study after that is the presence of uh, two groups for comparison. The second point is what the, the relation between the exposure and outcome, and what about the time of follow-up. If I start with exposure, and then following the patients forward in time, addressing the outcome in the future, this is a cohort study. Again, for cohort study, typical cohort study, I start with exposure. For example, I want to correlate, I know that uh, smoking is a risk factor for lung cancer, so I want to address this issue in our locality. So I can assign 1,000 smokers and another age and, and gender matched control groups, non-smokers, so 1,000 smokers, 1,000 non-smokers, and then follow, following up them month yearly by chest x-ray and if i start today in 2014 and i'll end in 2020 so six year flow up to address the correlation between the uh, the effect of smoking with lung cancer development so if I, at the end then i ask myself how many patients develop lung cancer in the smoker group and how many patients in non-smoker group for example if i start with thousand smokers and after six years I have 100, for example, 100 patients, so 10% of smoker patients develop lung, develop lung, will develop lung cancer. And in the other 1,000, so if you find 1,000 versus 10%, uh, this, mean, this will carry statistical significance. So at the end, I can say lung smoking is associated with significantly with lung cancer. If the design is of the study like this, starting with the exposure, Following the patients periodically uh, to find the outcome in the future, this uh, perspective, and here no, no int intention to intervene. It is observational, prospective study. This means cohort study. So this is a typical cohort. And a typical cohort study usually answer the question, what will happen? The persons are exposed today, and I don't know the future, what will happen? So the study, the answer, what will happen, it is without intention to intervene, it is observational cohort, typical cohort study. Look at this example. Here I'm st I start with the outcome. So I visited, or I am in the chest medicine, then I, I, I knew all well the patients with lung cancer, and then I have matched group, matching age and sex about, uh, with no cancer. So I have cancer and no cancer, and then I follow them, I follow them longitudinally to the pack, follow them to the pack. So searching their files for five, six years in the pack uh, to uh, assign the exposure. So by this way, 
I search, I, I nominate lung cancer cases and no lung cancer, and then search their file five years back to uh, uh, searching for exposure. So this is case control study. Case means the outcome. So I start with the outcome, searching the back, the longitudinal follow up to the backward. So I am, I am answering question, what happened? So this is case control study. So if I start with the outcome and I search for the exposure in the past, this is case control study. Like the uh, females with breast cancer and those who uh, without breast cancer, with normal breast, and then I searched their files in the back, searching for the exposure to oral contraceptive belts to just to make relations between the exposure to oral contraceptive belts and development of lung cancer, of the breast cancer. The uh, last type in the, uh, the famous type in the observational study is there is no time of law, just one time. So if I want to know the prevalence of hepatitis C among our locality, so I invite the middle-aged persons and then test them for hepatitis C, and then I know the prevalence of hepatitis C in this locality. Uh, diabetes in the locality. So any prevalence study is cross-sectional study. Why cross-sectional study? Because exposure outcome occurs simultaneously in one time point. There is no uh, time for follow-up. So this is, this is uh, can be nominated as cross-sectional study, survey study, prevalence study, as, uh, or cross-sectional studies. So this is the same uh, meaning for one study design. So again, if there is no intention to intervene and there is no comparison, this is descriptive study. If I have the two groups, so even in cross-sectional studies, there is positive and negative hepatitis C, for example, so it's two groups for comparison. Then I ask myself, what the relation between exposure and outcome? What the direction of the time? If the time is forward for the future and answering about, answer the question, what will happen if the persons are exposed? So exposed and exposed and the outcome will appear in the future. This is a, a typical cohort study. The second, so I answer the question, what will happen? The second study, I start with the outcome and search in the backward in the past about the exposure. So I answer what happened and then what if there is no time? So I'm answering question, what is happening now, current, right now? So no, no time, so snapshot study, cross-sectional study, or survey study. Another type of study in the observational uh, type, for example, if, if I don't know, I hear I, I invite the middle-aged men in this locality, and then searching back in their history about who were smokers and not smokers, so uh, I, here I assigned the exposure. But I didn't know the outcome. And then all of them were, ex were investigated by chest X-ray today to know who, will ha who have the lung cancer or not. What the difference between this example and the previous examples? In cohort study, I start with smoking and non-smoking and then follow up the patients in the future to know who will develop lung cancer. In the case control study, I uh, start with lung cancer versus no lung cancer, and then backward, uh, uh, passing backward in the past to uh, assign the exposure. But here, I have criteria from the uh, cohort study that I didn't know the outcome. When I start the study, I don't know the outcome. But, and I use uh, criteria from the case control is uh, looking back at the exposure. So if I don't know the outcome and go in time, go to the back to know the exposure and assess person today, so I have today and the past. So there is a time. It is not cross-sectional study. And I don't know the outcome, so it is not case control study. And the same, I don't have future, I don't have the uh, follow-up to the future, so I don't have the prospective criteria of typical cohort study. So it is a typical or non-concurrent or historical or retrospective cohort study. So uh, the fourth type in, the, in this observational study is non-concurrent cohort study, is the, the researcher, researchers don't know the outcome and search in the back to assign exposure. Regarding intervention studies or experimental studies, include animal studies and human studies, and we classify human studies according to the, if there is control or not, or controlled or non-controlled, and according to the, uh, the relation of the control group to the study group into concurrent 
sequential and historical. So concurrent, uh, example of the concurrent controlled intervention study is randomized control trial. And by randomization, I neutralizes, I neutralize selection bias. What, what, does, what does it mean by neutralizing selection bias? So uh, before I answer this question, I should answer uh, the method of randomization. The method of randomization either using closed envelope or computer generated uh, tables, random table. So on the computer, they uh, will say if you, uh, after, after assigning the, your inclusion cr criteria and the patient fitting the inclusion criteria, so the, uh, the number one, number three, number six, number nine, uh, etc., in this group and the others in the other group. So this, by this way, the first patient will be included in the first in the in the arm A, and the other will be to will be according to the computer assignment. Close the envelope. If I include in my study thousand patient. So the total number is 1,000 patients. I then I bought 500 envelope, including assignment for Army A and the other 500 to Army B, and then uh, distribute them in random way, and then arrange them again from 1 to 1,000. So uh, when I uh, open the envelope, I find that this patient uh, belongs to the Army A, and this patient belongs to Army B. So according to the, the label inside the envelope, I assign the patient to NR. So this will neutralize my selection. Suppose that I want to do a study and the study compare the, uh, discuss the issue of survival. And then if I am biased and I want to uh, have results biased toward uh, any arm, by this way I can collect the, the young patients to the arm that I want this arm to be, to, to survive more and the uh, army B to the old elderly patient will be in the army B. And by this way, I make selection bias. So randomization neutralizes this selection bias. Non-randomized is another way. So uh, uh, self-controlled, sequen sequential self-control that like if I address the fatigue score and then give intervention and after uh, serial time, I look at the uh, fatigue score. This is I saw so the patient is controlled uh, of himself, and the crossover study. This is usually uh, done in the pharmacological study to assess drugs. For example, you know, we can start with army A and army B, and then so start plan start randomized study. Uh, some patients included in the uh, in, in the army A and some patients in army B for a certain time period, and then I evaluate my results. At the end of the phase one, step one, then I stop all medication, army and B, and then wash, uh, leave the patients in a wash out period, and then start in phase two or step two. In step two, I cross the patient who were treated with army A, now should be treated in the army B, and vice versa. At the end of step two, I evaluate the results. Suppose that I find the results, drug A is superior to uh, drug B in arm in the phase one or step one. And when I repeat the experiment by crossover, I find the same drug A is superior to B. So this gave a bonus for this drug. So the uh, type of control, this can be gold standard. If I, if I measure, the, uh, if I want to invent a new diagnostic criteria, I should measure the diagnostic uh, against the gold standard. Suppose in the diagnosis, I consider renal biopsy is a gold standard for renal diseases. So renal biopsy should be the uh, standard, gold standard. Placebo, what does, mean, uh, what does it mean? Placebo means that we can give, uh, give the patients the active drug or a drug similar formula similar to this phantom, similar to the active drug, but includes no active material. And this is to, to just to, uh, as you know, the patient, patients can be affected by just given drugs. So just to neutralize for this, and this is known as placebo effect. CHAM operation, it is an operation usually in animal, just to alleviate the effect of operations and anesthesia. So I do an, uh, an, an aside the animal, open the animal and close it without any surgery. It's a sham, sham group. How to mask in randomized control trial? 
uh, there is open label. What, what is meant by open label? Open label means that the patients uh, take the drug or, and the doctor giving the drug, both of them know well which is the active and not active. So if I am the doctor and uh, I am I'm the person who is running the study as well, so I give the patient this drug, the active drug, and I know well this is an active drug, and the patient know, know well, knows well this is active drug too. So it's open open label study. Single blind, whom the patient does know, and the doctor knows. Double blind, the post doctor and the patients. So doctor who give the patient the medicine, doctors who give the medicine don't know. It's, it's the active or the placebo. And the same, the patient doesn't know. So if the doctor and the patient don't know the, which is the active or placebo, this is a double blind and this is give bonus for the study. It's the more strength to the study. Triple blind, sometimes you have the principal investigator who know the codes. And then there is the investigator who collect the results of investigation. So the, the investigator in direct contact with the doctor and the patients. So the investigator, direct investigator, direct doctor and direct and the patients, both of them don't know uh, which is the active or not or the placebo. This is triple blind. So this is give another another bonus. So this is an example. This is the the study. Here we don't we. Uh, if in this study that uh, aimed to assess the efficacy and safety of basiliximab, basiliximab it, it is a monoclonal antibody against interleukin 2 receptor alpha component in induction therapy and live donor kidney transplantation and assessing the patient. This is long term, five years prospective randomized control trial. In this study, we have the total number 100 patients, and then we use the close the envelope method. So I, I write in 50. 50 envelopes include the basiliximab, and the other 50 include no basiliximab. They hear no placebo, which is no placebo in this study. So patients received either triple immune suppression, steroid cyclosporin as a suppressant. This is this was the traditional immune suppressive at the time at the start of this study. So 50 patients received the traditional treatment, and another 50 patients received the traditional plus basiliximab. So uh, I was the investigator and I was the doctor, so I knew this is a basiliximab group. This is a patient who received now basiliximab or not, and the patient knew knows knew well that he received either basiliximab as add-on or not. So it's open label, no not placebo. So it is open label, randomized control trial, randomized by closed envelope. So uh, when I finished the 50 label here for basiliximab and 50 here without basiliximab and then I randomly distribute the envelopes together and then reallocate them and assign them from 1 to 100. Then if we have a patient we ex we including, uh, that will be included in the study, we exclude uh, children and the elderly patients. So uh, applying the inclusion criteria, this patient is fed, I withdraw an envelope. Now basiliximab, I, I give basiliximab. No basiliximab, no basiliximab. So this is close the envelope, and uh, by this way, we neutralize the selection bias. And, and then we publish the results of this study after one year, five years, seven years, 10 years. So, so this is very nice. Sample size is a very important issue to be known well. We have two statistical errors, two types errors. Type one is statistical error, and type two statistical error. What's meant by type one statistical error? Type 1 statistical error, it is a false positive. Po false positive means that if I have a study run 100 patients in the army A and 100 patients in army B, and you assess them, you find uh, an, a positive, uh, significant difference by statistics. And when you repeat the experiment, the same experiment, but including 1,000 patients here and 1,000 there, you'll find that no difference. So the first difference was false positive. So this is a false positive result. Usually we accept a 5% uh, uh, type 1 error. Regarding type 2 error, if we have a study, 100 patients here and 100 there, no difference. When we repeat the, the test using 1,000 here and 1,000 there, there is significant difference. So the, the first uh, uh, result was false negative. So this is type 2 error. 
type 2 error usually accepted within 20 percent and from the type 2 error we can calculate the power of the study so power of the study is 100 minus type 2 error so if we accept 20 percent percent type 2 error then the power of the study 80 percent Based on this, we can know the study. If, if you have a difference, if you know from the, if you, if you wanted to apply for the basic SMAP study, if we know from the previous experience that the difference is 25% between patients receive basic SMAP and the other who don't receive, so we usually uh, 50 patients in each arm will be a good for the randomized study. If the difference is 1%, it's just to, to show you that if the expected difference is 1% to run a good study, you should have 3,500 in each HR. Again, to show the type 1 and type 2 error, here if the probability of adverse outcome from the previous study is expected 2%, and the, and, the, and the study group, this is a control group, and this study group 20%. And you will accept 20% type 2 errors, which equals 80% uh, power, so you need just in HR 56 patients. If you accept 10% uh, type 2 errors, you, you, have, you should have to 72 if you accept uh, if the expected 20%. So this is just, and you have, we have uh, programs in the computers that uh, allow us to know, well, the sample size. Regarding the third type of study, which is meta-analysis, and systematic review. Systematic review, as you see here, the reviewers reviewed all the issues, all the papers that address this article. So systematic review may include meta-analysis, and meta-analysis may be done without systematic review. So regarding meta-analysis, if you look, this is one of the recent meta-analysis, discuss the issue of kidney stones and the correlations with cardiovascular risk factors. And here, this is a meta-analysis of cohort study. Meta-analysis means that we should review the results of other studies, and if it matches inclusion criteria, then we, we use the results of individual study to reach the final study. So suppose that in my study, basal XMAP, 100 patients, 50 here and uh, 100 from Mansoura. And if, ha if we have another study from other country, uh, 200, another 300, and then I collect the result of all these studies that can match together, this will be a good, uh, this will give us a good answer. So here, the, no randomized study in the stones and the cardiovascular. So they reviewed all cohort studies. And then here, the flow diagram of studies, so uh, 1,000. And then uh, excluded because here, the, after revision, excluded a large number of studies. And here, another excluded according to these uh, steps of identification, screening, and eligibility. And at the end, they found that the uh, six studies can fit for the final analysis. So this is the results of meta-analysis. The meta-analysis includes, uh, here if you look, if you look here, this is the study identified. So you will start with the first author in the first study, and this, uh, uh, this is the first one, and the second one, third one, and this, all these are six studies. And we have this line, the vertical line, which is one. Here they use hazard risk. We can use relative risk, or the ratio or hazards, according to the study, and then, each individual study, the result of each individual study is expressed by this square, the side of the square. So the hazards here is two, for example, and this is a confidence interval. If the confidence interval doesn't uh, pass through the two directions of this vertical line, it will be significant. So here, in this study, the, uh, this study showed that the stones increase the cardiovascular risk factors. And this study crosses the, um, the the, this line, so it is insignificant. So the square, each square, the side of a square denote the result of each study. And the side of square denotes the number of patients included in each individual study. And lastly, the diamond, the top diamond, reflects the overall results. And so the, the top of diamond reflects here, this, this increase the, the presence of stones, increase the risk of cardiovascular risk factors by uh, 20% here, 1.19. Uh, so it is, this is, because it doesn't, it, it is here, so it's increased risk. So square, side of square, size of square, the presence of diamond, so side of diamond refer to the overall result. But take care because sometimes there is heterogeneity and there is just, if you find heterogeneous studies, this affects the meta-analysis. I want to just to conclude here in this sector, 
that meta-analysis depends upon the constituents of the studies included in the meta-analysis. If you include double-blind placebo randomized control, well, high-quality randomized control trial, this will be the best answer for any question. If it uh, includes observational studies, the uh, evidence will be lower than the will match. So according to the strengths and the weakness of different studies, if you have case series, uh, the strengths is on fine new disease, and it can uh, uh, cons be considered as preliminary study. The weakness includes a new control group and no comparison. Regarding the case control study, quick and cheap, convenient, and good for rare diseases, these are the strengths. And regarding the weakness, based on the call, and a lot of confounder, what's meant by confounder, sometimes we refer to exposure and outcome, and the outcome may be related to other exposures that was not mentioned. And the best example, although it is cohort study, it is the uh, coffee drinking and mortality trial that was published, not trial, it's coffee and drink uh, results that was published in New England in the medicine two years ago. They found that when they uh, the do the first analysis, they found that in this cohort study, exposure to uh, coffee, drinking coffee is associated with high mortality. But when they adjust for smoking, the result was the reverse completely. The more the drink, the more the coffee you drink, the better survival will have. So this is confounder. Here the, the is, exposure to coffee was not the cause of mortality, but the exposure was smoking. So smoking is considered confounder in this study. So although it is, as, as I mentioned, it's cohort study. So here cohort confounders are a uh, uh, weakness. Difficult to choose control group in some patients. Here, the core study is observing patients, uh, so it's the strengths and the perspective on time, but time consuming. Possible confounder, as I mentioned, and the, the, the famous study is the coffee and the mortality. Cannot prove causation, so it's its association. So, this is the, the sword on the side of observational studies. We cannot say causation, it is just observation, uh, but it creates a good hypothesis for the randomized control or intervention studies. Sometimes it's very difficult or impossible to do a randomized study. For example, you cannot classify your patients into group A and group B, and group A will be dealt with, with humanity and humor attitude, and the other group will be punished. This is unethical. You cannot do a randomized control study to assess the value of parachute in case of traumas in the, in the airplanes. You cannot do a randomized control trial if you have patients in stage 5 chronic kidney disease with hypervolemia, uh, hyperkalemia, and severe acidosis, and you cannot classify them into patients uh, to be treated with dialysis and others to be treated conventionally. You cannot do uh, because, uh, studies like this because it will be unethical. So sometimes it's very difficult to run a randomized control study. But again, the observational studies, even cohort study, uh, carries a good hypothesis for intervention study. Randomized control trial, Control for bias, for selection bias, and not for all bias, because you cannot generalize the results of randomized control trial. You should respect the demographic criteria of the patients. If I say the treat trial uh, showed a result of darb uh, with and, and stroke, but the demographic criteria here, patients, elderly, chronic kidney disease, before dialysis. I cannot, I cannot use the result of treat study, even if it is double blind, placebo randomized control trial, except for elderly type 2 diabetes. I cannot generalize the results to dialysis patients or other group of patients. So it control only for selection bias. Control over exposure, best for proving efficacy of the drug if we can use, if you can do it. The weakness expensive, time consuming, and some ethical consideration prevent us from doing this study. This meta-analysis is summarized literature and validates smaller studies and prospective natures. Time consuming, this is a weakness, difficult to combine studies, and it depends on publi published studies, so it is subject to publication bias. Uh, so uh, if the question is therapy, use randomized control trials, uh, severity and the efficacy, as I mentioned. If it's cost, use economic analysis. So each question determine the severity and the order of study to be used. Another issue, if we, if we know well the uh, study design, we can know the hierarchy of evidence because if you have meta-analysis of large randomized control, high quality randomized control, this is the best and strongest evidence you have in the medicine. If, and followed by large multi-center randomized control trial, 
followed by the meta-analysis of a small randomized control trial and, and single center randomized control trial, and lastly with observational studies. Uh, and the, the weakest evidence comes from the clinical experience or basic research. So we should look at the result. If you go here the, the, uh, to the upward, this is increase the validity. And if you hear this is and increase the duration of uh, study, and this is the time spent in clinical appraisal. So the uh, this is a very important issue uh, because I finished in the previous slide into uh, observational studies here. Observational studies are not all of them doesn't carry the same strengths, and this is one of the st very nice studies that discuss this issue. This is the correlation protein intake and kidney function in the middle-aged population, contrast between cross-sectional and longitudinal data. If, when they looked at the beginning of the study, the population of the study, when they uh, correlate in a cross-sectional manner, the, the, the uh, heavy diet, high protein diet, and GFR, they found that they are in direct proportion. So the higher the protein the persons eat, the higher the GFR. But when they look, long longitudinal in the future after 11 or 12 years in this study they found that starting with the high protein diet is associated with declining more declining gfr so the results of cross-sectional studies is the opposite of uh, cohort study and core studies superior to cross-sectional study so i finish with this uh, was two mq question extended match questions and this uh, were real questions from the manchester mansoura manchester program uh, this is uh, for students so these are the types of studies, and then the, uh, to match this question with type of studies. So a group of authors wanted to compare prevalence. So if you compare prevalence, so this uh, cross-section study. A group of authors at 2013 uh, chose uh, 1,000 smokers and, uh, and 1,000 age and sex matched non-smoker. So this is starting with exposure. The patient will be followed every six months, matches six rate to diagnose proctory carcinoma to 2000. 18, so this is uh, evaluate the longitudinal follow up for the future. So, this is typical uh, concurrent cohort studies. Concurrent cohort study. A study included 100 patients with symptomatic anemia were subjected to treatment and then evaluated every three months to assess the fatigue scores. This is self controlled clinical study. A group of authors wanted to compare prevalence of bronchial carcinoma among the smokers. This is uh, the same, so this is cross sectional. A group of authors in 2013, smoke, and this is re repeated questions. Sorry for that. So it's, it was repeated. Uh, the, uh, one of the recommended courses that will improve your abilities to uh, understand and to uh, uh, know all details related to the issue of study design, statistics, biomedical statistics, I, I recommend this course. This course was run twice before, and the third one will be on November 19, 2021, 2014, and it will be held in the Urology and the Fluor Center. And this course is directed by Professor Ahmad Shukhir. He is a famous name in the research in Egypt. And I think it, it is recommended. And thank you very much for uh, your uh, good listening.